Most football players are perceived to, to have a stereotype energy of going to nightclubs and having big flash cars. I don't fit in that at all. I'm a source of constant amusement to my teammates. And on the bus, it's all right to get two and a half hours of Whitney Houston or the drifters, but the pose go on for about two minutes. It's a rapid rush down the bus to see if you can get it off the tape deck first. I started off as a paint and decorating Stirling when I was part time with, with Stirling Albion. And although it was four and a half years, which was very hard, it was good to have a trade. And it was there that I, I got involved in politics for the first time. And a journeyman gave me a copy of, of the Ragged Trade of Philanthropist, which is still a book I, I read. <laughs> the political campaigns I've been involved in have been various. At the moment, involving obviously the Stop It, the anti poll tax campaign which I think is very, very important and which I think the Scottish people have proved they just don't want to pay. But other ones I've been involved in, um, I've been just at local branch level with trying to get people elected for council. The proposals that the government have put forward for facilities such as we have here at Meadow Bank and other large centres about the country are that the management functions will go to private companies, which means that really all the profit-making concerns such as the catering, the cleaning and all things like that will go into private hands, so the profits will go into the big companies and all the menial other kind of tasks that are non-profit making, but which are just as important to the public, will remain in public hands. So therefore, all the benefits will go to the big companies. I think the most basic and obvious worry is that the cost of entry is going to double, treble, even quadruple with the privatisation of sports centres. And I think that's a very, very big worry for parents who have got young children who enjoy sports at the moment. How are you going to explain to them that they can't go because the prices have went up? You can't explain to them, it's government policy. The safety standards are also going to come under the jurisdiction of the, the management after privatisation. I think safety is all important in a swimming pool. I think it's very important to look at the fact that St John's Ambulance and other sporting bodies I've already publicly stated that they're very worried about the privatisation. I think we've really got to look at all aspects of that in a broad spectrum. As in the Commonwealth Tool here, we are very well staffed and very well supervised. I think perhaps that wouldn't be the case with a lot of unscrupulous companies. But as in here in Edinburgh, they've put in hydraulic wheelchairs so that disabled people can get in and out of the pool. And you've got to really ask yourself if private companies will invest in these kind of facilities for disabled people and physically handicapped people. And if profit's a motive, you've really got to think that perhaps this won't be the case. <laughs> Rooms like this are very important for facilities such as the Commonwealth Pool. The initial investment would be tens upon thousands of pounds and it's very expensive to, to keep upgrading the machinery which it needs um, as you get advancements in modern technology for fitness. And I think it would be a shame if the ratepayers who have paid out to fit out a room like this would have to eventually pay higher prices to come here and also the profits from it would go into a, a private company under privatisation. <sighs> Do you just give it back as in a wall pass. We'll go right round the circle. Try to use two feet. Here we are. Right. I've right. coached uh, a women's football group um, on a few occasions and they enjoy the sport. Um, there's now leagues in Scotland for, for women's football um, and they're trying to encourage more participation. But it's going to be hard if the cost of uh, public football parts and public venues are going to go up. Um, it's hard, to, hard enough to encourage women to play football. But it's not just football, it's, it's every other sport as well. And I think it's important that we get them to participate in as many sports as they can with the advancement and more leisure time and more leisure hours for everybody. Here at Meadow Bank they've got concessions which are an important part of an unemployed person's daily life. I think it's it's a good thing to have. I think basically you got to ask yourself the question, is sport a luxury or is it a right? And I think everybody should have a chance to do whatever sport they want, including such specified sports as javelin, and weightlifting and things like that, which you can't do as you could do play football or play rugby out of the back garden. You need specialised equipment for these. And I think it's important that these kind of rooms and facilities remain in the hands of local councils who will constantly upgrade them and improve them and keep them maintained.